you know, we're, we're, our world has always been going through hard times. You, you think that by now, uh, 200,000 years of our human existence that we would have figured out how to just be cool with one another, right? Right. You would have thought, we would have figured it out. Um, but we haven't. And, um, you know, when we looked at today and, and especially what's been happening these past few days, um, with the violence and um, the killing of innocent people, but then we have leaders that are global in nature that um, belittle, shame, um, and hurt and harm people in other ways. Um, but what keeps me moving is that when you're in a dark room and you light a candle, it's no longer dark. So imagine if we were in a dark room, because sometimes it could really feel dark in this world. But if I had a candle and you lit your candle and you took your candle and you lit it, someone else's candle, you lit someone else's candle, whether it be in the East Bay, New York, South Africa, that's what I, that's what makes me excited is that we all have the ability wherever we are to begin to light our candles. And all of a sudden it doesn't become dark because the light always, always kills the darkness. So I want to start with that uh, because you are all the light. And this is more about, I think, just sharing with you a little bit of, of what I've experienced, but more it's about hopefully you seeing yourselves as the makers of light. Um, because sometimes, you, you, you know, if there's a wind and you see the light, the little wick flicker, then you stand next to each other. Because then with several candles together, you know, you, you can't blow it out. And I remember when we used to have interns, uh, young people coming in and I used to ask, so what are the, what are the biggest things you're going to learn by your internship here at the White House? And they'd say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to learn about, you know, policy and politics and how government works and, and how, you know, policies made and, you know, they're ready to change the world because they thought they were going to learn anything about government. And I used to say to them, well, there's really two more important things that you're going to learn here. And that is, look around because there's going to be people in this building and there'll be people outside of this building that they're going to lift people up, whether it be community voices, whether it be community issues, whether it be truth telling, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to empower people and they're going to lift people up. And I want you to say to yourself, that's how I I want to be. And then there's going to be people in this building that in order to lift themselves up, they have to push other people down. And I want you to tell yourself, that's how I don't want to be. And really that has been sort of my life to see and to observe on how I want to be as an individual. What is the best way that we can, um, like be able to make the right decisions and do make the decisions that help us um, help other people and organize for people. You know, I think you already have it in you. You, you know, you know, right from wrong. You, you have studied Dr. King, one of the greatest sites of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, pressured sometimes he was conflicted but he always came back to love and nonviolence. yeah and so i think you already know I, I i just i mean and you can do it in so many ways you could just even in a simple smile earlier you mentioned unconditional love and 
um, often we struggle with unconditional leadership to lead and to be consistent with our leading no matter the way people treat us or the reason why we're leading, but to just be consistent and to lead unconditionally. And do you have any advice on how we can do that better? Well, remember, leading's not always being up front. And, you know, at, at the Center for Social Justice at Glide, um, you know, we're, we're human, I'm human, we make mistakes. But what I try to do is not, not have everything fall on me. <laughs> so I spread leadership around. Um, and I think that's important to do. I think a, a, a good leader does that. Um, because if, if you rely solely on one individual, and this is just even, you, you rely so much on yourself, um, because we're not perfect, we're going to stumble and we're going to be disappointed, right? Um, so, you know, I would say, you know, think of that consistency and think of yourself as a leader that is multifaceted, you know? Sometimes you're going to lead by standing up and saying something that's righteous, Sometimes you're going to lead by just sitting next to someone and encouraging them, you know, while they're saying something that's righteous. Sometimes you're going to lead standing in the back and just being content, like, wow, I'm so moved by what this person just did or what they said. Right? Um, quiet leadership is good. Right? Because if you want people to know that you are a leader, Sometimes you don't, it's not about what you did or what you said, but it's how you listen, how you encouraged, and how sometimes you're just a quiet support for somebody 